Now that we've encrypted the passwords and are able to read from the database for authentication, we also want to make sure that we only show the information for which we're authenticated to see. If I log in here as Kurt Clement, you can see that I see all of the passwords here. For example, I can see bankofamerica.com, my username is Kurt Clement, my password is my password. But I'm also seeing this Wells Fargo username, Kim Clement. Well, the user ID is 14 and 13. So looking at our database really quickly, there are two users, number 13 and 14, Kurt Clement and Kim Clement. And if I look at the passwords, I see that the user ID for Bank of America is 13 and the user ID for Wells Fargo is 14, in other words, Kim's. But I'm showing both of these. And really, I just want to see the one for a multi-user system. So we need to change a few things. The first thing I want to mention is in the site controller, we have the controller for the login. Now here we had replaced this line here with these two lines. And that's badly formatted because really I'm saying if this is true, I want both of those lines to be executed. And what would have happened is I would have gotten an error message. In fact, before I save that, look what happens. ugly so we need to go back and save that now when I log in it warns me appropriately and works when I have the right password so that was the first change the other thing I want to point out here is that by redirecting to another URL we're not just going to another page we're actually accessing another controller and the controller we're accessing in this case is passwords that's what's going on so it goes to passwords controller the default because we didn't specify anything in fact if we do specify something it's the same page the default is index so we go here and what this does is it uses this clash right here to get all of the data from passwords and puts it into this variable and then passes it to the index view so let's replace this line here with some conditions. First of all, we're going to get a record. We're going to get a record out of the users table. That's what the model represents. And we're going to find which one by username. Now, having username unique is good in this case. And we're going to get the username from the app. When we did the, uh, the identity and validation, it assigned the username to the app itself. So this is a variable that's throughout the app. And I'm going to say look up that name and give you the entire record. Now when I pass, uh, when I get data for the data provider, I'm going to say give me the table passwords on this criteria. And the array tells me the criteria. Well the conditions is, is that user's ID, which is a field in passwords, user's ID is equal to record ID, which comes from the user's table. Okay, so now I only want the passwords for this user ID, and then I want to go back and do exactly what I was doing before. Now when I log in, it takes me to passwords, but only shows me the one from user 13. Now, I still have a lot of changes I want to make, because when I create passwords, first of all, I only want to specify the location, username, and password. I don't want to specify this information here. So first of all, let's delete that information. The easiest way to find out where that information is being displayed is to realize that we're on passwords create. So we're going to the passwords controller and to the action create. Here is the action create. Now, at the end, what action create does is it says, go to the create view. All right, well, let's look at the create view. Again, that's under views, under passwords, create. So here we are. And what does this do? It just does a little bit of setup and then it says render partial form. So let's go to form here. Again, under passwords. And here we have all of that information that's put out. And we just want to delete everything after password. And delete all of that. Now it only shows me those fields. Now this isn't going to work yet because I can say that I have a login at Disneyland.com. My username there is Goofy. When I go to create this, it's going to say, hey, these fields are required. Now, 
The date created, I should be able to say that's now, because I'm creating it. The last update is also equal to date created, but is in the database as a timestamp, so we can actually make that null, and it will timestamp it correctly. And the users can't be blank. I have to know what user's ID this should happen. And this is the advantage of setting up your database with your business logic so that these things can't happen and you don't rely on the application. So now we're looking at the password controller under create. We can see here that we got all of our attributes from the post command, but not all of the attributes are there. So we need to add some extra information. The first bit of information we want to ask access is we want to get the record again by looking up in the users table the current logged in username and get that entire record and of course then what we're going to do is we're going to make that ID part of users ID. I'll replace all of that with this information here. The first thing you notice is that I've added brackets to the save which is just good programming form even though I've got one line. I get most of my attributes from the post command but there's a few things that I don't have and one is the user's ID which comes from the record ID which comes from the current login user. The next thing is I don't have the date created and here I'm just saying give me the current date right here. And there's other ways to do this but I'm filling that in. Now this still isn't going to work because I have that one table that one field that's not filled in. So now I need to go to my password model and I need to look. I look at I require all of this information and I don't require. I know I said in my database that it was not null, it was required. But because it's a timestamp data format, I, if I do pass it null, it will timestamp it with the current information, which is exactly what I want. I'll save all of this. And it took me to this view telling me that Disneyland.com, username Goofy, password Mickey, timestamped it. Excellent. So then if I log out, log back in, I see the two from the user. Now another thing I'm going to want to do is when I create these passwords I don't want to show all of this information. In order to find out where that information is being stored I go to my passwords controller. I can see that it's the default or the index. So let's look at my index view. My index view says that I'm going to provide that information to my underscore view view. Very creative naming here. Ah, and here it is. So what do I have? I have ID. Don't need that. Location, I want that. Username, password. Date created. That's for internal purposes only. I'll delete all of that. Now when I refresh, I just have the information I want. Whoop, forgot users. Refresh again. And that's just the information I have. Of course, just to review, if I log in as Kim Clement, I only have one here. I'll create a new password for Kim. Now, notice that I'm coming to this views here. There's 11 here. Now I don't want all of that. I, in fact, I, what I would prefer coming back to is this view here. You can see it was added and added correctly. So how do I do that? I want to go to my passwords controller. Here it says redirect it to the view. I'm saying redirect it to the index. So when I create a password for Kim, and there we go. Now there's a lot of other cleanup I could do. I want to get rid of these since they don't form any function. I also want to manage passwords and do all sorts of other things. But that's uh, a functioning application at this point. I could also change the header and the footer and a bunch of other view stuff. That's it for now. I'm going to go ahead and commit these. It shows me all the things that I changed. Stage it. And then commit it. And that's it. Till next time.